Hi everyone and welcome to another episode. Today we discuss pain during stretching and if there is a way to work around it. Although some level of pain is unavoidable in flexibility training since you need to train close to your limits in order to progress, in today's video we're going to see a science-based way to reduce that pain that goes all the way back to 1965. I discovered it while searching for an explanation for something unexpected that happened to me while training for the front split that might have happened to you too and it has to do with pain. And this thing was that while I was stretching close to my max range and of course feeling a fair amount of pain, the moment I contracted the same muscle to train actively on that range, I stopped feeling pain. Although the feeling was still intense, the pain was much, much less. Interestingly, when I stopped the contraction, the pain came back to the initial level and this kept happening every time I shifted from relax to contract. Pain, less pain. Pain, less pain. Let me know in the comments if you've experienced this too. Now, before I show you the science behind this and how to use it in your flexibility training, I just want to make sure that everyone is on the same page with what we're going to see. And that's because if you're new to this channel, you might be wondering why I contracted the same muscle I was stretching on the previous example. To quickly explain this, there are many more methods to train your flexibility apart from the passive static method. In active methods like the contract relax and the contract passive range, we contract our muscles close to their max range to increase our flexibility with different mechanisms. You can learn all about these methods in my past videos. Now, back to the pain reduction I got from these contractions, it turned out after countless attempts that stretching pain plus contraction equals less pain or no pain at all. And this is exactly the opposite of what I was expecting, which was that adding a contraction to an already in pain muscle would increase the overall intensity of the activity and lead to more pain. What is even more interesting is that the pain reduction felt greater, meaning I felt less pain the harder I contracted my muscles with greater intensities. After some testing, I discovered that the vast majority of the people I was training back then had the same response too, so the questions I was intrigued to answer were is there a science-based explanation for this effect and can it be used in a large range of flexibility goals? Thankfully, the answer to both of these questions was yes. So let's start with a theory that explains all this and then see how you can use it in practice. This theory is called the Gate Control Theory of Pain. Ronald Melzack and Patrick Wall first introduced this theory in 1965 and scientists today continue to consider it a significant building block for our understanding of pain with ongoing discussions and research. The basic idea around this theory is that pain signals can be modulated by other non-painful signals such as touch, pressure or change in temperature. So in simple words, non-painful feelings can shut down or reduce the transmission of painful feelings. Let's see a simplified version of how this works in flexibility training, specifically on the front split on which I feel the pain in my hamstrings. The pain is perceived by pain receptors on my hamstrings and carried out through first order fibers called A delta and C fibers in the spinal cord. There they connect with second order fibers which together with third order fibers carry the pain signal to the brain. When the pain signal reaches my brain, this is when I feel the pain. However, according to the gate control theory of pain, the perception of pain does not come simply due to a stimulation of the pain receptors. In other words, simply because there will be a stimulus of pain, it doesn't mean you're going to feel it. There is a so-called nerve gate located in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, specifically in a place called substantia gelatinosa that controls the passage of pain signals to the brain. If this gate is close to pain signals, then pain cannot reach the brain. So how does the gate close? Well, according to this theory, if the same area is also stimulated by other non-painful stimuli, a different type of nerve fiber that is larger in diameter, called A-beta, blocks the gate 
as it signals travel to the brain. So the main idea is that the gate closes to pain when other signals like pressure, touch or changes in temperature are received from the same area. This theory explains the pain relieving effect of skin rubbing or heat packs that are commonly used in modern medicine. And this of course explains perfectly why I feel less pain when I contract the same muscle. Although the contraction as a muscle activation is triggered by motor neurons, the muscle activation that is caused increases the feeling of pressure and awareness of this area, which is a stimulus perceived and transmitted by the A-beta fibers that block pain. The more I push, the higher the activation of these neurons and the less pain I feel. And just to make sure that I'm not misunderstood, the feeling is still intense, but the level of pain is lower. As always, the degree of this effect varies between individuals, with some having a small reduction in their pain and others, like me, almost completely shut down pain. To see if this works for you, you can do the following test on a simple exercise that is for all levels. Take the position of the tailor pose and gradually reach close to your max range. Once you're there, try to estimate the level of your pain on a scale from 1 to 10. For the test, aim to reach a pain level between 8 to 10. Once you've done that, start a contraction by pushing with your knees against your arms. So knees push up, arms push down. Make sure to block the movement of your legs with your arms so that you stay on the exact same level as before. Losing 1 to 2 inches here will ruin your test. The contraction intensity, aka how hard you push with your legs, can be around 60 to 80% of your max effort. After 20 seconds into the contraction, evaluate your pain again on a scale from 1 to 10. Then stop the contraction and return to the initial passive stretch to see if the pain comes back. Alternate between 20 seconds passive stretch to 20 seconds contraction to test how your body responds to this. Do you feel less pain during the contraction? If you're someone who can generate a good amount of activation on these muscles, in other words, if you can feel your adductors well, control them and contract them adequately in that position, you should get a noticeable effect. On the other hand, if you don't feel these muscles well or don't understand how to contract them properly, you'll probably need to develop that first to get more of that effect. And that's because the A-beta neurons that I discussed earlier that block pain have to do with feeling the muscle and being aware of its state and position. If you have a low mind-muscle connection on that area, your contractions will probably generate a small activation of these neurons and therefore a small effect on your pain level. So don't get disappointed if you don't get a significant effect. You just have to train more with active methods like the ones that I'll present in a minute. Now, before we see how to use this in practice, I want to note that although the gate control theory of pain remains a theory, I found by experience that its basic principles work for most people, while there are no drawbacks in the application of the strategies that I will present here. For this reason, I enjoy communicating this concept and I encourage you to at least experiment with it no matter your pain level. You might gain a lot more than what you expect, as you're going to see in strategy number two. So let's see three different ways that you can use this effect in practice. One, you can make sure that your muscles are warm to a level that you feel them warm and not just ready to go. As we saw earlier, changes in temperature is one of the feelings that is transmitted by the A-beta fibers which close the gate to pain. You can even use heat packs to induce the feeling of warmth in that area, which will definitely have a greater effect on pain reduction. This is commonly used in physiotherapy for rehabilitation purposes. It has a moderate effect, but it's hard in terms of setup for everyday use. The second way to use this effect is to do what I think everyone does intuitively, which is to massage the area. Pressure and touch also stimulate the A-beta fibers and will reduce your pain to some extent, depending also on the level of this stimulus. However, still not ideal for everyday use and for every exercise, since in many exercises you can't reach the area you stretch. The third way is my favorite, as it is the most convenient to apply and also the most beneficial, and this is simply to contract the muscles that you stretch. 
I propose two different strategies to incorporate this into your training. The first strategy is to do low intensity isometric contractions in exercises that you already train with passive methods like the passive static. In this case, instead of staying completely relaxed, you do a minimal contraction of the stretched muscle of around 20 to 30% of your max effort, which is just enough to reduce your pain level. In the traditional passive static method, the goal is to relax on a certain position and increase your flexibility by increasing your stretch tolerance, which simply comes by spending time in this position. Assuming that you want to reduce your pain when doing that, keeping a slight isometric contraction of the same muscle throughout the entire set will reduce your pain level to some extent, while it will also not interfere with the mechanism by which this method works. So, in this first strategy, I propose to convert some of the exercises that you already do with passive static to slight contractions of around 20 to 30% of your max effort. These contractions should be isometric and last for the entire set. However, in this first strategy, due to the low contraction intensity, the effect is not as big as with the next one. In the second strategy, you get the biggest reduction in your pain and also many more additional benefits. In this strategy, you work with intense isometric contractions at your end range positions. The intensity of these contractions varies from 80 to 100% and they are supposed to fatigue your muscles. This will improve your strength, coordination and flexibility while also reduce your pain much more than all the previous methods I presented. You can do that with methods like the contract passive range. In this method, the basic idea is to do long and intense isometric contractions with the purpose of increasing end range strength close to your max range. To be sure on how to apply this method, make sure to watch my dedicated video on that topic. If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe to this channel to support what I do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.